Hey everybody, are you looking for easy annuals to bring pollinators to your garden? While native plants, especially trees and shrubs, are absolutely essential for bees, butterflies, moths, and other pan pollinators, annuals also provide nectar and pollen. Plus, they're inexpensive and a great way to add color to your garden and help out the pollinators. What is an annual? It's basically a plant that completes its life cycle in one year. It germinates, it grows roots and leaves, it flowers, it sets seed, and it dies all in one year. So here are several, 10 actually, uh, pollinator plants that I think are great for northern gardens or really any garden. First is ageratum. In the north, this is an annual. In other areas, mist flower, as it's sometimes called, is a perennial. And it's a great airy plant for skippers and other butterflies. You can find them with white flowers or purpley blue flowers, like the ones in the background. And they are kind of a, a fun middle of the border plant, depending on how tall they can get. Uh, this one is called Monarch, it's part of the Monarch series. As you could see, the Monarchs like it. Um, and it was developed by our local breeder in Minnesota, David Zlesak. Alyssum is a classic ground cover. It's inexpensive, it's very um, popular with bees and other pollinators, and the sometimes alyssum will come back from seed. It makes a great living mulch in the garden, but they're very inexpensive at the nursery as plants, and so I usually buy a few of those to supplement whatever comes back from seed in my garden. Calendulia, that's not a zinnia, it's calendulia, which is an edible and it has been used as a medicinal plant for ages. These plants are great for attracting hoverflies and other beneficial insects to your gardens. Um, so put some in the vegetable bed, they'll help with aphid control if that's a problem for you. Marigold, another classic annual, and it's if you have a plant that really attracts bees, a particular variety of marigold that you like, be sure to save the seeds. They're super easy to save at the end of the year. They last through the winter, and then you can start them inside if you want or just throw them out in the garden. But I usually start a few inside so that I've got some good plants going into the spring. This particular variety started out as a safari marigold, but you know, I saved the seed, so who knows what it really is now. Pentas were new to me in 2022. Believe it or not, I'd never planted them before. They're a terrific plant for bees, and they also bring in hummingbirds because they've got a tubular flower. Um, I bought these at the nursery. The, if you want to start them from seed, they do take a little while to get started, um, about nine weeks. So that means you'll be starting yours probably in the very beginning of March if you want to try to grow pentas from seed. Otherwise, buy some at the nursery, put them in a pot. They are gorgeous. Salvia. Oh, there's so many salvia, and there are perennial salvias in the north as well as the annuals. I usually have some of the annual salvia in my garden. I've had the perennials in the past. I've had May night, and it was a beautiful plant, uh, performed very well. But for a variety of colors and um, different interest each year, try a few salvias. Some of the better uh, varieties for pollinators are the black and blue, Victoria blue, the U of M recommends su Summer Pink Jewel or Purple Fairy Tale. I've also heard gardeners recommend Amistad and Mystic Spires. The one in the picture is called Rockin' Playin' the Blues. It's a fantastic tall salvia. There are a lot of good ones to try, so try a few. Sunflower. So here's some information about sunflowers. Not all of the cultivars on the market actually have pollen, so you're not really feeding the bees or butterflies or whatever um, insects might land on your sunflowers. In fact, the one in the picture here is a beautiful plant, but it has no pollen. The bees are sleeping in it. They're not actually, you know, gathering pollen. They're sleeping there. Um, this one is one that I grew in a vegetable garden, and it's producing seed. It has pollen. It has purposes beyond um, 
just just looking pretty or providing bunk space for the bees. Um, you'll also see a lot of birds on these, so if you do want to save the seed for your own consumption, you'll probably have to cover up the head of the sunflower at some point. This is Tithonia or Mexican sunflower, it's sometimes called, and it's probably the best plant around for bringing in monarchs to your garden. I grow them from seed every year, um, and I usually start a few indoors and then put a few out in the garden just as seeds and let them grow there. They can get very tall and a little bit gangly, and they flower profusely, and they will be absolutely surrounded by monarchs all summer long. Once they start flowering in the later part of the summer, they'll be surrounded by monarchs. I've never had a plant that has gotten as much attention as this one has from both my neighbors and monarchs. Fabulous plant. This is Verbena bonariensis. It is an annual in Minnesota. It's a perennial. In fact, it's kind of an invasive in the southeastern United States, but in Minnesota, it's not invasive. Um, it does a great job in the late summer of attracting bees, butterflies, and other pollinators. It's very tall and airy, a great plant for the back of the border. My only problem with Verbena bonariensis is it's been hard to find the seed for it. There are other annual verbenas you can also get, and those will also attract pollinators. Lastly, of course, I have to mention zinnias because they are the best. <laughs> they come in a million different colors and varieties, and you can plant them all over your garden. They're super easy to start, start from seed. They provide a ton of color as well as pollen for birds and, or for bees and butterflies. Here's one note about zinnias, though, and I learned this from a real pollinator expert. The short types of zinnias, they are not attractive to pollinators very much. In fact, the ones I planted didn't attract anything. The tall zinnias, the ones you grow from seeds, those are the best ones for pollinators. So be sure to plant a few of those in your garden. Thanks for watching and have fun buying seeds this year.